Hello, everybody. Welcome to another wonderful episode of Met Related Pep Talk. And in today's session, I'll be taking you through how to generate a simple spatial visualization or a spatial plot for your multi dimensional data set. And so we'll be using the same data as we've been using before. Nothing has changed. The only thing we'll need in here is to have the Catopy function. And so to install that, you would use the conda install minus C, side tools, Catopy. And you can run this directly from the, if you're in Windows, from your CMD or from your mini conda prompt. And then if you're in Linux, that's your um, any of the Linux versions or the flavors, you can also run it on the terminal. Now, one thing to note is for the Catopy, when you go onto the Python page, that's the PYPI, PyPy, you would see the pip install, but then with the pip install, you would have limitations because you would need to then install the juice and then also the projection to separate the end. Most people find it quite difficult to do that. And so a more simplistic way is to use the conda um, approach and then you have that sorted out. Okay, so when you're done, we would still be using the same packages that we've used before. So we we'll import XRA, import NumPy, and then we we'll import matplotlib.pyplot as plt here. And that's to help us create our plots. That's the plotting um, functionality or the plotting package within Python. And then I've already explained the CM, so we'll be using that for our color maps. And the new things we'll have here are the Catopy. Now I'll be making use of the CRS child function of Catopy. So I've imported that as CCRS. That's like the simpler name I'll be using to call that as CCRS. And then also I've imported a feature function under Catopy as CF. Now, somebody would wonder why line 15 and 16 have the all importations or the all importing, but then they are not um, aligning or they, they don't follow the same order. Now, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just an approach. It's just to teach you that or to make you informed that there are multiple ways of importing the package. So in similar way in line 16, I could run it as this. I can say import catopy.feature as CF. And that's the same as what we are having in 16. All right. Now, what that, it can, I can also, um, Okay, so what, what that means is that we are calling the child function, which is feature from the parent Catopy, and we are calling that as CF, so that whenever we call CF, we are referring to the feature function under the Catopy, all right? And that's exactly what we've done up here by saying that, okay, from this parent, import the child as CF, all right? And with the same analogy, we've imported this third package, which is to allow us to format our longitude and latitudes. All right, so from there we have the files called and then all the various um, you know, selections, that's an area selection. Now, this is for the region of North, the Northern Hemispheric part of Africa. And so we just extracted that region by using the cell function. So I start off by running this whole script. Okay, and that is done. So what we'll do first is to generate the seasonal climatologies. So let's call this C's NHA. And then all we are doing is we call the NHA, which is the region we've um, extracted. And then we apply the group by function. We are grouping by time.season. When we are done, we now find the average over the time. And that's it. So once we run this, it would give us the seasonal climatologies. And that is done. Okay, so now we can go ahead and plot. And just call the C's NHA, then dot plot. And let's say I'm using a contour. So dot contour F. And then in here, I can just specify what my X is. X in this case. Let's um, first look at the data. So the C's NHA which is a seasonal data contains longitude, latitude, and then the season. So I indicate the X to be the longitude, and then the Y to be the latitude, and then the core, which is like what to represent the column as the season. 
yeah sorry i nearly forgot all these should be strings so they should be in single quotes all right and then from there we can also bring a call wrap uh, which is optional too but i'm bringing that so that we can have two separate columns okay so when we run this it should just generate the plot for us and that's it straightforward so we have the seasonal climatology of temperature for dgf for mem for jja for son and that's it now let's look at the second approach so let me comment out this and then we we'll use the second approach now in the second approach since i want to make use of the catapai that's to give it the coastal features the lines and then also the countries the, the the country borders and the rest so i'll need to first use a for loop in this case so we can start off by saying for c's in let's run something here first now if i just call this c's underscore nh dot the season it would produce all the seasons so i'm going to use this as the the holder for the loop so for c's in c's nhe dot season all right so now this will be where we are going to generate everything within the for loop but before that let's create the figure environment so fig equals to plt dot figure all right and then down here we can now create our ax equals to and now fake dot add subplot but then for you to add the subplot now we want to create a two by two dimension so i indicate two comma two and then the position because i don't want to use one position so that they get to overwrite on that same position i need to change them so let's call the position in our count and then before this figure let's initialize count as zero and because the count needs to be a non-zero number we start off here by saying the count should be in steps of one so count plus equals to one that means in the loop for the first time since count is zero count will be one and then when it goes through the whole loop comes back to this as long as the loop is not done it will pick the next count which is two and be increasing those steps all right and then aside that we will need to indicate the projection so what we'll need in here is to include a projection so projection and then this is where i make use of my ccrs and then the projection i need that's a plate carry in this case all right so this is enough and then now we need to plot so we call our c's and he all right and in this case we we need for that season so c's nha dot season equals to our c's so it means we are using this as an if function we are saying that first this could just mean like pull out all the seasonal climatologies where the seasonal climatologies or the season we are looking at is equal to the season that the loop is on at the moment okay so if our cs is dgf it means for the whole seasonal climatologies we are having let's just extract the dgf seasons all right and once we've extracted that we can now okay so let me run this first so that we get to see and understand it better okay so if we run just this selection okay yeah okay i need to let's run the whole thing first because we are not plotting so let's just hope it doesn't give us any error all right okay so that's all right so now let's run this part again 
so that you get to understand what I'm saying. All right, so now when you look at the season, because the final season in there was SON, so we have only the data for SON left, All right? Okay, so we can go on. That means as it's looping through, if it's DGF, it will pick for DGF. If it's MAM, it will pick for MAM alone. All right, so once we are done with that, we can now add the plot function to it. So C's pick that whole season and then plot it, all right? And then in order to include the country, the coastlines and then the country borders and the rest, let me just bring these ones from here and then explain it from here. Okay. Okay, so we use this. Bear in mind, I've created the axis AX. So I generate the coastlines from this AX so that it's with reference to the axis. Okay, we'll create the coastlines over there. And then the resolution here is. Um, there are different resolutions. So if you want a very fine resolution, then it means you are going to use a very um, smaller value than this. Okay, and mostly the, that will be highly resolved. So the smallest curves and then the turns in the coastlines would all be visible. But then because it's high resolution, it also takes time to load, all right? And then we use this line to create the country borders. All right, and okay, these two are not really relevant at the moment. Let me take them out. And then I use the ax.set extent to limit the region or to set the margins for the region. So we're starting from the western part that's negative 25.25 to the eastern part 50.25, and then from the southern to the northern. All right. So that's like left, right, bottom, top. Okay, now let's run this part alone. And that's it, all right? But you notice that the color bars are not the same. So what we can do is in the plot, we can put a restriction on the minimum. So V min, we can say negative 20 and then Vmax to be 30. And once we run it, we get one with a uniform level. And that's all. Okay. Then, now let's make use of our cattle pie. So let's say GL, we call it ax.gridlines. And that's a function, so it should have the parentheses. And then once we are done with that, we can set gl dot x label bottom. So be true. Yeah. And then we set also the GL dot Y labels on the left to be true. Okay, so let me rerun that whole section. And you see, so now the grades get to show. All right. And then the final part, let me bring this from here. Okay, so with this, we only indicate that the x axis should be formatted as the longitude formatter, which we've imported from this line, line 17, and the y axis as the latitude formatter. So once we run that, we get them in the longitude and latitude form. All right. Now, let me increase the figure size so that we can do away with all the squeezes in here. Okay, so. And put into this parenthesis fig size equals to so let's say maybe 10 by 10. I hope it doesn't get big enough. And 
And okay, let's reduce it a bit. Okay. Okay, all right, and I think this is better. Okay, so we are able to see what's happening in here. And that's one of the simplest ways of generating your spatial plots. In fact, so in next episodes, I'll try to look at some other ways of handling them or other ways of dealing with it. So I hope you had a wonderful time learning. Don't forget to subscribe and be posted on whatever happens here and like i always say it's always better on the other side and until you push yourself beyond you wouldn't really see what lies ahead of you what's the beauty ahead of you and that's how programming is so push yourself to the core get better at it and then you would love it have a wonderful time and then keep learning <laughs>